Hey everybody, GameDevLuke here. Welcome to part three of our weapon generator series. In part one, we generated a weapon. In part two, we added statistics like damage, accuracy, and more. We also added a rarity system and we used the user interface to summarize all these statistics. So we have a couple of things today, equipping the weapon, firing the weapon, we will be using a ray casting system for this. We will also be adding particle effects like a muzzle flash, tracer rounds and impact particles. And we will have a target to shoot at. Let's go. So this is what we have last time. We have random generated weapons with a rarity and statistics. So today we're going to equip our weapon and we're going to fire the weapon. But first we want to add a first person controller so we can actually look around. And for this, I am using the first person all in one package. And I'm also using this crosshair tile sheet from Kenny.nl, who makes a lot of free 2D assets. It's very cool. I need to add a 2D sprite package, else we cannot open the tile sheet. So I'm going to install this. Adding a UI and then image. And then we're moving everything to zero, zero. So it's exactly in the middle of the screen. We check preserve aspect, so it never stretches. Make it a little bit more stand out by setting the color. That's our crosshair setup. And now let's add our first person controller. So this is the package that you got from installing the first person all in one pack. I'm just dropping in the prefab in the scene. And what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna copy paste the position of our main camera because that one was positioned correctly in our scene. I'm gonna copy that, transform and paste it in the first person package so that they have the exact same location. And then I'm gonna delete my main camera. So in the first person all in one prefab, I am gonna set the gravity unchecked so we're not gonna fall. And the mouse is pretty sensitive. So I'm gonna put that at like six. And now you see that I have a camera that can look around by using my mouse. So that's the first person package setup and our crosshair setup. And now we're gonna work on equipping the weapon that we are generating. And for this, I'm gonna make a new script called player input. Unity, I'm making a new game object and I'm dragging it under player camera. And this is called weapon socket. And right now it's located like this. So what I'm going to do now is just for testing purposes, I'm going to add a weapon to it. So what we are looking for is that, that the weapon sockets position is at the right location and I can just generate or spawn a weapon uh, under the weapon socket as a child and make sure when it's at zero, 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 it is pointing in the right direction and it's in the good position. So we can do this by making sure our weapon socket is in the correct position. So I'm just going to drag this and, and rotate this until it looks nice. We move the weapon socket and not the weapon. This is very important because now if we would delete this weapon, we would throw another weapon under it. You see that the weapon is spawned at 0, 0, 0 and it's immediately in the right position. And that's because the weapon socket holds our offset for our camera. So we're going to delete our weapon now and we're going to apply this prefab. We're going to go back to code and here we're going to add a reference to that socket. So we're going to say public transform weapon socket. Now we have a reference to our weapon socket. And what we want to do now is we want to check if there is a weapon near us. And for this, I'm just going to use colliders. So I'm going to say, so I'm going to use void on trigger enter. And if the other dot game object dot layer is equal to the layer of weapon which we're going to set up in a bit so we're only going to check on objects that are in the layer weapon then i know i am colliding with a weapon so i know it's going to be near me and we're going to use this variable focused weapon is other dot get component weapon and weapon we don't have yet but we will make this as well first of all here i'm going to make a new weapon called Focused weapon, so we don't have it equipped yet, but it is in our focus. And I'm gonna go back to Unity and create the weapon script because we don't have one yet. Weapon. And then in input, we're gonna equip the weapon. We're gonna check if focused weapon is not zero. So if we have a weapon in focus and we're pressing 
Well, let's do the E code, equip weapon. And we're also passing through what weapon it should equip. And that's gonna be focused weapon. Then here we're gonna make that function. So we're gonna say void equip weapon with a parameter called weapon to equip. We're gonna add another variable of type weapon, which is called equipped weapon. So that holds the weapon we are actually equipping. And here we, we can say equipped weapon is gonna be weapon to equip. And then we wanna set the socket for this weapon. So we actually wanna use the socket we set up, the weapon socket. So I'm gonna copy this. And then we can say equipped weapon transform dot parent is our weapon socket. So now it's being parented under our weapon socket. And if we would then do this uh, equipped weapon transform dot position is zero, values are zero, 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 and equipped weapon transform rotation is also zero, which we use quaternion.identity for. But first we need to add a collider and so, and the layers to our weapon so we can actually see if a weapon is near us. And for this, I am gonna do the following. I'm gonna grab all my body prefabs and I'm gonna add a sphere collider to these. And this can be pretty big. So let's do a radius of five. And we're also adding them all into a new layer. Add layer, I'm gonna make the weapon layer and then Right, selecting all the prefabs again and putting them in the weapon layer. Ch children too, that's uh, fine. And also make sure we put the collider on is trigger because we don't want to collide with the trigger, we just want to have a message. So that's our collider setup. Let's add the player input script to the scene. We're going to add it to the first person prefab, player input, and we're going to set the weapon socket. So with the player input script there, we're gonna select our bodies because we also have to add the weapon scripts to all our bodies. So let's see if this works. Pressing spacebar, pressing E to equip. And it is parented now, but as you can see, the position isn't right. And that's probably because we're not using local position and local rotation. Because the equipped weapon is a child, uh, you have to use local position and local rotation, else it's using the world's position and rotation. So generating a weapon, pressing E, and there we go. We have our weapon. Trying again, trying again. Yeah, this seems to work. So the equipping works, but I want to equip the weapon in a way that Borderlands also does this, and this is by flying towards the player and rotating towards the player. And for this, we're gonna use a coroutine, i.e. numerator called move weapon to socket. And we're going to use a lerp here. And a lerp uses a start and an end position. So first of all, I'm making a start position. And that's going to be equipped weapon. That's going to be the location the weapon is at currently. And the end position is going to be factor 30 because when the weapon is at 000, it is perfectly aligned with our weapon socket. And therefore, it's in the right position. And we're going to do the same for the rotation, quaternion start rotation. This is going to be its current local rotation. The end rotation is going to be quaternion identity. Actually, what we had right here. Since we're going to move this now over time, these ones can go. And here we're going to call start coroutine move weapon to socket. We also need a timer because we're moving the thing over time, so we need actually to have a timer. And here I'm going to make a while loop. And while this move timer is smaller than... So this is how a basic lerp works. You can see here factor3.lerp. And a lerp takes in three things. A start position, or position A an end position or position B, and then a timer. And this timer is between zero and one. So zero is always gonna be A, and one is always gonna be B. So it doesn't matter how big the distance is, zero here always is always gonna be this position. So that's why I'm using the while loop with a move timer smaller than one, because I know at one it's gonna be finished. And here we're adding the timer up. So every time we go through this loop, the timer is incre increased a little more. So it continues along its lerp. And after increasing the timer and moving it a little bit, we're waiting for a very small amount of time 
before continuing so we actually see that it's moving over time and i'm also gonna add this whole line for our rotation and it's almost the same instead of local position we can use local rotation and instead of factor 3.lerp we're using quaternion because quaternions are for rotations and we're using the start rotation and the end rotation generating a weapon pressing e and there we go as you can see it moves towards me and it also rotates over time towards me and now we can move on to actually firing the weapon so let's start on firing the weapon for firing the weapon i've made a new script called weapon which is completely empty for now and here we want to have a couple of variables we want to have fire rate and i'm just adding some random stats for now So these are the statistics we're going to work with. They will be copied from our weapon parts uh, later on, but for now we're using them here. And now we're going to work on the shooting. And for shooting, I'm going to make a new function called do fire. And in fire, we are going to say shoot. Update can go. And then we're making shoots. Shoot. shoot. And we're gonna fire using a raycast system. So I'm gonna make a raycast hit and a new ray. And we're gonna shoot this ray from the camera.main transform position and the camera.main transform forward. So that's the middle of the screen and then forward. So now we're gonna shoot middle of the screen and straight ahead. I'm gonna visualize this by making a debug draw array and we're using the ray dot origin and the ray direction as parameters and we're multiplying the direction by the shoot range so this is the how long the ray is going to show making it red and making it last five seconds then we're going to ray cast this ray use the ray out hit and the length is going to be the shoot range and that's it for now and then we can check if we have hit something by saying debug log hit transform.name and then the do fire is going to be called from the player input because we want our inputs to be separated from our other scripts so that's why i made it like this we're going to check here if equipped weapon is not zero so we know we have a weapon equipped and we are pressing the left mouse button then equipped weapon can do fire saving this let's see if this works Generating a weapon, equipping it, and pressing my left mouse button. And in the scene view, you can see that I'm shooting many, many rays. And they last for five seconds, and then they go. So the thing is that the rays are now always straight. And well, since we are working with accuracy, we, will wanna, we want to add accuracy. So going back to the weapon, and this is the thing that controls our direction of our gun. So we, we want to add an offset to this make a new factor 3 accuracy offset i'm gonna use a random inside unit sphere so this is just a sphere and it's picking a random point inside this sphere and i'm gonna multiply this by the default accuracy so this is a standard of a size of one and my default accuracy is 0.3 so now this offset is gonna be a max of 0.3 and here in the direction i'm going to add my offset to my forward and now if i go back and play so now when i fire my weapon in the scene view i'm not moving my mouse i'm only shooting you can see that it's shooting in a very wide cone all right so we need to rename the default accuracy to accuracy offset but this variable is already called accuracy offset so i'm gonna say just say offset here and this is going to be accuracy offsets. Replacing this, this, and there we go. Makes a bit more sense. Um, but there is more because this is our base accuracy offset. But later on, we will also get an accuracy value from our weapon parts. So we also need to take that into account. One minus our accuracy times the accuracy offset. 
So what this formula does is, even though the accuracy would be very low, let's say it would be zero, then it would be one minus zero, which is still one, and then one is multiplied by the accuracy offset, which is 0 0.3. So then the offset would still be 0 0.3. And the higher it, the accuracy gets, the less this value is gonna get, and the less this value is gonna get, the less this is gonna get. So that means the less offset we have. The higher accuracy we have in our gun parts, the straighter we shoot. So we're adding two new things. We're adding ammo and we're adding fire rate. So before shooting here, I'm gonna check if our current ammo, that's a variable we still have to make, greater than zero. If time.time .time is greater than next fire, which we also have to make. And if those are true, then next fire is gonna be time.time .time plus fire rate. So we're making float next fire, which has no default value. And we have an int current ammo. If we have ammo and if the time time, which is the game time, is greater than next fire, then we can shoot. If we shoot, then next fire is going to be the current game time plus our fire rate. And this uh, means that we have a cooldown in between firing. So in shoot, I'm going to say current ammo minus minus, which means minus one. And while we're at it, let's also add a reload function, void reload. And what reload does is it says current ammo is ammo in clip, which is well by default now 32, but it will also be influenced by our statistics. We also want to have a boolean here is reloading is false. And we also need to trigger our reload from our input script. So I'm adding another method here, public void do reload. And reload is going to check if I'm not reloading already. True. And I'm going to invoke the reload method. And I'm going to say do this in whatever reload speed is. And invoke means you start a method, but it waits till this time is over. So this could be one. So now it's going to wait one second before reload, which is this method is called. And we're using our reload speed for that, which is currently one. And we also need to make a bool is reloading is false. And then do reload, we have to call from our update. So we're going to copy paste this one. If we have an equipped weapon and input get key down, I mean R, then we're going to equipped weapon do reload. And we're forgetting one thing, and that is to reload the gun at the start. So in start, I'm going to say reload. And now I want to see how much ammo I still have, but it's a private variable. So I'm going to this menu and then to debug. And then you can see my current ammo over here grayed out is 32. And I'm going to hold my mouse now. You can see I'm still holding it that I, I have a fire rate now, which is really slow. And you can see that my ammo is now currently zero. I'm going to press R. It's reloading, went to true, and my current ammo is 32 again. And as you can see here, I can fire again. We want to get our stats from our randomly generated weapon. So if you were not here before in the in the previous series, our weapon is made out of parts and each part has certain statistics. And the statistics that we are using now for our firing are all used in our weapon parts. So for example, accuracy is a stat that the scope has. Damage is a stat that the barrel has. So we're going to replace these default values by the values that actually come from the randomly generated weapon. And for this, I'm going to make a new function, set weapon stats. And here we want to have the dictionary that we have used in the previous parts, which is of type weapon parts, weapon stat type afloat. And this is what we're going to call weapon stats. And this dictionary has all our stats. I can actually say my damage is weapon stats and then look for the weapon stat type damage. And this is why we use this dictionary in the second tutorial series so that it's, it is very readable and so that it's very easy to use. And ammo per clip was actually a float, so I'm going to cast it here to an int. Let's make them all private. 
And then we still have to call the set weapon stats and we have to call this from our weapon body. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make an initialize method and I'm going to give it the same dictionary as this one. Here I'm going to say set weapon stats and then pass on the dictionary. And this initialize I will call from our weapon body. So first of all, our weapon body needs to have a reference to weapon. As soon as the weapon body is done initializing, we are initializing our weapon. And we're doing this at the end so we know that everything is set up. And we are passing on our weapon stats dictionary, which is this one over there. And that one holds the summary of all our statistics from the weapon parts. And we have to set our reference. And I'm dragging the weapon script in the empty slot over there. Here we can see the weapon card, the damage is going to be 15, the accuracy is going to be 10, the reload speed is going to be 0 0.1 and the magazine size is going to be 16. I'm going to equip it, I'm going to go to the debug menu again and see the reload speed, accuracy damage 15.8, accuracy 10 point something. And here you can see it actually works, so let's fire this weapon. And there's one thing I forgot, we actually have to divide our accuracy by 100 because this is percentages and we want to have a value between 1 and 0. Continuing with some particle effects. We're gonna add three things. We're gonna add an impact particle, a tracer round and a muzzle flash. And we have to do a couple of things. If you followed our previous parts, then first we have to go to our barrel prefabs and open them and add an empty game object at the end of the barrel and I added a particle game object as a child of this. I'm going to enable this again. Instead of using a weapon part, we need to make a new weapon barrel part script and this weapon barrel part script just has these two things. It has a public transform muzzle and a public game object muzzle fx. But weapon parts can go and you can add the weapon barrel part instead. Make sure you set up the statistics again and also uh, drag the muzzle in there and drag the particle in there. Then we are going to weapon body and in weapon body we're going to make a public transform muzzle and a public game object muzzle fx. And since our weapon body has a reference to the barrel, we're doing this here. And then we need to change weapon parts here to weapon barrel parts. When we did that, we can say muzzle is barrel.muzzle and muzzle fx is barrel. And in weapon initialize, which we made before, next to the dictionary, we're also passing through the weapon body. Adding weapon body, we're also gonna have a transform muzzle and a particle system muzzle flash fx then we're going to say muzzle is body muzzle and muzzle flash fx is going to be body dot muzzle fx at component particle system now we have a reference to the muzzle of our barrel and we have a reference to the muzzle flash and one thing we're going to do in shoot is we're going to emit the muzzle flash so what we get, what we can do is Muzzle flash fx emit one, so it's gonna emit the particle once. We're adding a line renderer. I'm gonna call this tracer fx. In the start method, I'm gonna get the line renderer. So I'm gonna say tracer fx get component line renderer. So this is the reference setup. So how a line renderer works is it has two positions, a start position and an end position. And well, the start position is, of course, the, the part where the bullet comes out, so our muzzle. So we can set this position in code by saying tracer fx set position 0, which is going to be the first position. And we want to set this to the muzzle dot position. So now the line render is going to start from the end of our gun. And as soon as we hit something, we can say tracer fx set position. And which position do we want to set? One, which is the second position to hit dot point. And this is what the raycast has hit. So if it doesn't hit anything, I'm going to set position one to the ray dot origin, which is the start of our raycast. And then the ray plus the ray dot direction times the shoot range. And we're going to add our line renderer. I'm selecting my body prefab here 
and adding a line renderer. And set the width to something very small, 0.02. Give it a material, tracer FX material. The tracer material, we're gonna use the shader particles, standard inlet, we're gonna enable the emission, and we're gonna set the color to something bright orange, 191, 62, and then an intensity of 2.5, which is pretty high. Then I'm selecting my body and I'm setting the material. Then I'm gonna copy this line renderer and I'm gonna paste it in the other two bodies. And we need to fix one error here in weapon generator and we're gonna cast the barrel here to weapon barrel parts instead of it being a normal weapon part. All right, so let's see how this works. Generating weapon, equipping, firing, and you can see we have trace surrounds and we have a muzzle flash and smoke coming out of our barrel. But our trace surrounds are visible and they have a shadow. Here I'm going to turn off the shadow, cast shadows off. I'm going to add that it flashes the line renderer instead of that it's on all the time. So here I'm going to make a new enumerator, flash tracer, and this is going to be super simple. Tracer FX enabled is true. Wait for a very short time and turn it off again. Return new. And whenever we shoot, I'm going to say, after we've set the position, I'm going to say start coroutine flash tracer. And it should be off by default. So I'm going back to my prefabs, selecting all my bodies and making sure the line renderer is off. There we go. Now we have something that actually looks like a trace around. And the last thing we're adding is an impact particle. In the raycast, as soon as the raycast hits something, we're gonna say game object, instant shaded impact is, and then instant shade, the impact FX, where we still have to make, and it's gonna be spawned at the hit dot point, which is the position raycast hits something. And for the rotation, we're using this quaternion dot look rotation, and we're giving it the hit dot normal. We're gonna destroy the instantiate impact after let's say one second. Public impact FX, which is a game object. Selecting all my bodies and then going to the weapon script and then impact FX and we're gonna put in sparks. And there you go, you can see now that we have impact particles, we have sparks hitting the surface. We have trace arounds and we have a muzzle flash with smoke. So that is all for our particle effects. And then the last thing we're going to add is a target to shoot at. So we're going to make a new script. And the target is going to have a max health of 100. It's going to have a current health. In start we're going to say current health is max health. Public void take damage with a parameter float damage to take. Here we're going to say current health minus is damage to take. And we can, we're gonna say if current health less than zero, then destroy game object. And then we're also making a coroutine flash red. We are gonna say get component renderer material color is gonna be color.red. And then after a few seconds, and we're turning it back to white. Let's call the coroutine here. Start coroutine flash red. And I've added these models to the scene. Now I'm going to add the target script on them and of course a box collider else they will not be hit. And they have 100 health now and there's one more thing we need to do in weapon when we hit something instead of debugging the name and here we can say target is hit transform get component target. We're checking if the object that we hit with our raycast has a target script if that is true so if it's not null then we're gonna say target take damage and then we're gonna pass in the damage of our weapon and this damage is from the dictionary and this dictionary is made out of stats that are from our weapon parts All right generating weapon equipping it and shooting the targets you see the flash red and that they're being destroyed so that is our target script that was part three Finally, we can pick up our weapon and start shooting at things and actually do some damage to them. So part four is gonna be a smaller one. We're just gonna add physics to our weapon. So for example, in Borderlands, whenever you drop a weapon, it falls away from you and you can pick one up from the floor. That is what we're gonna add. And it's also gonna be the last part of this series for now. 
We're going to move on to something new. Guess you'll have to like, comment or subscribe to see what that is going to be. Enjoy your day. Bye bye.